Hey guys, welcome back to another ExoticCarHacks.com video. A question I get all the time and a lot of fucking trolls on my page. Troy not, oh, how do you buy a car this cheap? This shit doesn't make any sense. Why would a dealer ever sell me a car at any of this cost? <sighs> These nuts, let me tell you something. This is the way reality works. Trolls can go suck a cock and reality is you can actually afford to buy the car of your dreams because there's people, it's called supply and demand fucking retards. Start understanding how the shit works before fucking calling me out on shit you don't understand. So let's clarify. How do you negotiate a car? Sorry, I had to get that out there. I'm sorry, but there's like so many trolls and I deal with so many comments. It becomes really difficult to like move on. So I get like, I want to punch my computer every time because there's an idiot doing that. But for those of you that are watching and learning, I appreciate your patience and support as I put the trolls in their place. So let's talk a little bit about how do you negotiate a car and actually get the price you want, uh, especially when it seems unreasonable for the dealer to sell it to you at that dollar amount, right? So real simple, dealerships hold cars 30, 60, 90, 120 days. Some dealerships decide to buy cars with the advantage of knowing they can hold them for a long time and not lose money. Most dealerships want to move a car 90, 120 days, especially exotic cars. They prefer to move a car in 45 days, but it doesn't always work out that way. So 90 days is really their threshold to generate if they're going to make a good profit out of a car or not. The benefit of dealing with exotic cars is that a lot of these older exotic cars sit on lots much longer, meaning they sit on lots for 7, 10, 12 months, at which point the dealer is taking a risk. It's saying, I have 200K invested in this car. I can't buy four to five other cars that cost less money or four to five other cars that could be rotated and each of which can have a profit. So the reason why dealerships want to move cars is to make money. They're not car collectors, they're car dealers. Their job is to sell cars. When a car hits a threshold, when it doesn't become profitable for a dealer to hold, the dealer looks at two options. Can I wholesale that car to another dealership? Can I move that car lower at retail so I don't make a loss or maybe make a very small profit? That's when you come in. You come in understanding that because you can actually look on the car facts and help you understand, hey, this car has been sitting here for seven fucking months. You can actually go on the car facts and look at when was the last time vehicle was offered for sale and what was that date and what can you buy? You know, like this, so that tells you like, okay, the car's been sitting there six months and it tells you the dealer that sold it. It also tells you how many dealers before that may have been in the same sister group just passing the car between themselves because nobody could sell it. So that's what happens. Now it's an opportunity. It's an opportunity for you to go in and make an educated choice about what you're willing to pay for that car that will work for both the dealer and for you. So the negotiation strategy is easy. First, pick up the phone, call the dealership, get a point of reference or contact, always. Typically, if you're getting the, uh, if you're getting the actual uh, secretary, because you're calling just the generic number because you don't know, here's the easiest thing you can do. Pick up the phone and be like, I wanna talk to a really experienced salesperson. Be like, I don't want to talk to a rookie. I would like to talk to an experienced salesperson. I've had a really bad experience buying cars before. I'd like to someone who's worked there quite a while. They will give you the right salesperson. Or go on Google, don't be lazy, hit up the dealership, look up the reviews. Who is the most reviewed salesperson? Especially in small car dealerships, there's not that many guys, it's a small group. Call, be like, I wanna to talk to Steve. Steve, I saw, I saw you, uh, you know, advertising this car. I wanted to talk to you about it. Do you have a few seconds? Sure, PJ, what can I do for you? Okay, so first off, before the dealer even asks you, be like, allow me to give you my email and phone number. That shows you're serious and you're not just shopping around. Be like, let me give you my email and phone number so that in case we get disconnected, you can call me back. You, now, this is reverse psychology. Dealers typically do this to get your information. So now what you do is you do just the opposite by giving them your information before they ask. Next, when you're actually looking at you've given that information, let's talk about the car. Don't just jump into, dude, are you gonna take like 20K less than the car's worth right now? No, they're not gonna do it. Start talking about the car. Be like, I'm sorry, I'm, you know, this particular car, I'm not in your state, I'm not close by, I'm not able to fly out and see it immediately. Do you mind showing me a few photos? In the photos, I didn't get a close up of the bolster. Uh, I didn't get a close up of the wheels. I don't know if there's any scratches or any dents that are unseen in the photos. Do you have a recent inspection report showing what was inspected on the car? Get to know the car. Show that you're a serious buyer and a serious buyer doesn't just throw out a number out of their ass. They get to know the car. Ask for the history of the car. 
like ask them, did you guys sell the car? Did you trade it back in? The reason you ask this is to match the information they're telling you to the car facts, to know if the dealer is a hustler or if the dealer is a relationship builder. By understanding the dealer, you understand how you're gonna dupe him into selling you the car much cheaper. So here's what happens. Now you know a little bit about the salesperson, you know about the car, and you know about everything else around it. Now look over on the market. Look on the market and find the lowest possible version of your car for sale anywhere else. So let's say you find a silver Aston Martin DBS sold in Nevada and it's got a tag of like 89,000. And yet you look at this car and it's, it's listed for 105. But you know it's worth less than that. So what you do is you're like, listen, uh, I'm also, the way you start the negotiation is real simple. I am also looking at a similar car in Nevada. It's a silver car and uh, I've, I've talked to that dealer and he's willing to give it to me somewhere around 80 grand. Now, I understand that car has a little bit more miles. I really prefer your black car uh, over this silver one. And so first, before I pull the trigger on that, I was ready to make a deal today, but I wanted to talk to you and see if you had any room to play with your car. I don't expect you to go as low as their money. However, you know, I want it to be somewhere in between because that's, that was really the budget I had kind of in mind. It's not really a question of affording it. It's really what I'm willing to pay for a DBS. Okay, no problem. Uh, what would be your offer? Well, I'm not necessarily sure about that I wanna make an offer yet. What I'd like to ask you is, are you flexible or can you work with me so we can get somewhere near that number? It's a yes or no. Usually the deal will answer something like, I think we can get close. That means, fuck yes, I would sell you the car exactly what you're asking. I just wanna to try to play you up five grand. No problem, no problem at all. Be like, that sounds great. Let me call you back. Now, well, here's what you do. You hang up the phone, they already have your information, and you said you call them back in five minutes. Call them back in five minutes and say, listen, I talked to my other dealer uh, and I told them to put a hold real quick as I was talking to you guys about negotiating the car. You see, right now you just look like a really nice guy. You don't look like a hustler, a player, a dealer, player, nothing. You're just a normal dude trying to make a good decision. So you're like, listen, I, I think this is great uh, and I think we can work together. Based on all their information I've reviewed, uh, I looked at the bolster, kind of looks worn. Uh, I looked here, it looks like it's gonna need tires. Your mileage is this. You know, like you give good justification for your number. I was at 80,000 on their car, I'd be willing to come 85 on yours. Now, your target price in your mind is like 90, 92, but you're coming with like a little bit lower, so they're gonna be like, no, unfortunately that seems really low. You know, we, we'd need to be somewhere around like 100 instead of 105. No, I completely understand where you're coming from. I know it's a really nice car. I noticed it was also sitting there seven months uh, that was kind of the reason why I approached you specifically with this. Uh, and, you know, I mean, I would be able to go a little bit more, but would really have to kind of come across somewhere in the middle, you know? I mean, I could maybe pull off like 87, 90. Do you think you could work with that? Maybe talk to your manager. He's going to go back. He's going to come back and be like, no, we're really, you know, we're really looking for 95. Okay. So now you're like 95 from 105 and you're somewhere around 87, right? So the deal is going to be around 90. That's where your deal is going to be. It's going to be 89 to 91. So the goal becomes this. You're like, listen, I don't want to play around because I don't have much time and I was going to buy the other silver car, so here's what I'll do. I'll make it really simple. We'll meet right in the middle. I'll do 90,000 on this car and I'll do a thousand dollar deposit right now, contingent to a deposit, contingent to a private person inspection, making sure the car's perfect. Uh, like as you described, then there's no other issues. If that's okay with you, I'd like to put a thousand dollar deposit right now at a $90,000 sales price and we can do a deal right this moment and uh, by tomorrow I'll have the car inspected and the next day I'll have it shipped. Now, if you can't come to that agreement and he says, no, I really want 92, then instead of trying to negotiate down the 2000, add shit to the deal. Be like, listen, I'm gonna have to do shipping, I'm gonna have to do this, this, this and that. Can I have you maybe throw in the detailing, the shipping and uh, do like a set of new pads on it, right before you send it to me? If we can do that, then I'd be ready to still pull the same deal today. The dealer cost on those things is ridiculously low. Like shipping state to state, it's like all the way from Cali to here, dealer cost is 800 bucks. They're gonna mark that out 1500 bucks. So if they're like, I don't have to make money on the shipping, but I can make money you know, on the car, they'll take it. So just do that. Like find reasons or ways you need to lower the price down and justify it. Don't just be the asshole that's like, you better sell me this car for 85 grand. Find a way to make the dealer seem like you're a reasonable person and more important that you're willing to pull the trigger today. If you do that, then typically negotiations work. You get a car for right where you want it to be. You drive it around, you sell it. They don't lose, you don't lose. Everybody's happy. You can resell the car if you're a better marketer than they are. So hopefully this explanation or this role play of how a negotiation works is helping those of you who think it's impossible to negotiate a car down. It's about finding the right car at the wrong dealership at the right time 
and then knowing what to say so that they're willing to let it go to you for the same cost as they would in an auction or a wholesale deal to another dealership. So hopefully that's helped you. And for those of you who don't understand how powerful it can be to learn all the strategies we teach at ExoticCarHacks.com, make sure you visit us and become an insider to get not only access to uh, all of the videos, like tens of hours of video content, HD film video content, as well as some of the industry's best buyer's guides, resources on which cars to buy and which shops to use to make the dream car you've always wanted affordable and in your driveway in the next week. And for anybody else that uh, has ever you know, not looked at what we do at Exotic Car Hacks, make sure you subscribe to our channel for more epic content in the weeks to come. Right here, not on these nuts, right here.